everybody today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm sitting between two beautiful ladies, Katie and Nikki. And if you wonder why I might sound a little nervous after reading poetry publicly several hundred times, it's because this is the first time my beautiful wife has been in attendance. So. Now, Nikki also chose these poems today, so if you don't like this selection, <laughs> the blonde back there. <laughs> the Heart of the Pumpkin. The pumpkin has been set out in the cold. Her heart shows through her eyes. There is a candle to light the way. The flame is small and weak, like the, like the sun, it is dying in time. The knife has done what the knife must do. Her children have been scooped out. She is empty now. Her smile is fixed. She is a parody of herself. Her face is a warning. Her heart is the smallest star in the night. Anything can stuff it. That was the good one, so if you don't clap now, <laughs> you don't get it. <laughs> Laura Chauvin, I know you like this poem, so I thought I would read it one more time in public. The Moth and the Printer. Of all the inhospitable shores upon which to attempt a mooring, few could be so unpromising as the inside ledge of the paper tray of my HP LaserJet 1300. And yet it is exactly there, disappeared now into the inner workings of a technology, that this creature, more delicate than any document, more intricate than any, any words, has chosen to make its stand. All I need do is press print. Print. And the 20 pound stock will begin its journey, its grind through this marvelous machine to arrive in the exit tray covered in wispy observations and running in smooth lines. The word made flesh, the flesh made word, the fragile flakes of toner married more closely than ever I'd hoped to my most breakable muse. My father's voice. Today's my mother, it would be my mother's uh, 92nd birthday. <clears throat> So dad would be about 102 today. My father's voice, the dead speak to us from photos and records, from books and letters, through paper and pixel and paint, through tape and wax. Still, when it's my father's turn, his voice rises from none of these. And when it drops, it drops, surely, soft tones, a few stones, a palm full of dirt. This, is, uh, this uh, poem appears on page 31 of this issue. Um, <clears throat> it is called, Come to Me, Says the Earth. Come to me, says the earth, and the acorn listens. The sparrow listens the fallen senator, the leather soul. Come to me, says the sun, and earth listens. Jupiter, Mars in its war paints, Saturn. When will I learn such gravity? The continents long for each other at two centimeters per year, two toenail speed. Mountains rise more slowly still, parsing time in millimeters, the rim of a penny, nine sheets of paper. When will I learn such patience? Called the night our divorce began. No one more astonished than we when the flashing red and wailing truck tucked into the long curve of our driveway and pulled up just outside our garage right next to the basketball hoop 
Six men rushed to the side door to ask my silken wife where the fire was. But then a voice squawked from a box on the suspenders of the lead fireman. It was nothing, said the voice, a false alarm. One hell of a way to spend the evening, said the fireman. But my wife told them that she'd just baked a plate full of brownies, and the six men shuffled into our kitchen in their heavy boots and partook of brownie. One of them was a little too marvelously blue-eyed for me to leave alone for too long with my wife, but there were six of them in there, laughing and joking with her, believed not to be fighting smoke, admiring her long legs, and I had become invisible, so I left them all to the flames of flirtation and went to sit on the side steps by myself, listening to the evening dropping from the trees, listening to the winding silence of our drive, the silence of our dissolving lawns, and the large, surprising silence of the truck itself, and farther off, larger still, the silence of the ripening skies, with their rolls of blues and mulberry blacks, their tiny rounds of fire. Thank you.